and call upon the first speaker from Durham B. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, we're here from your position to tell you one important thing today. Our bench is entirely not from Oxbridge. Now, I'm going to bring you three points today. I'm going to talk to you about how this sends the wrong narrative, or as I call it, sexual healing, not. <laughs> Secondly, I'm going to talk to you about how oppressed groups need role models and positive change and not simply cash, or as I like to call it, the love of money is the root of all evil. And then thirdly, I'm going to talk to you about blame and justice and how you strike social change, or as I prefer to call it, tainted love. <laughs> but before I do, I've got a fair amount of rebuttal to bring you. We think one of the big issues with giving somebody a lifetime of additional income is that they are less inspired to go out and work hard. We think that what can often happen is that if they have a sufficiency to live on, they won't really try and become partner, they won't really try and put in the extra hours at the office, because they don't need to for their own good, they don't need to for their family's good, and they don't need to for their children's good. So we would attack it on those grounds, and I'll get back to that in my role model point later on. Fundamentally though, and this gets onto the first point about, that he made about injustices, we feel that there are still injustices being perpetrated towards women. We feel what this policy says is that there is a way we can pay you back and we will be equal. We say money can never make us equal at this point. There is more to do, there is more we must do, and there is more we will do for women than simply paying them off. Then he went on to talk about the links between the modern women and the older generations of women. C point A. The modern women are still being oppressed. Let's address that first and then move on from there. Then he gave us this very counterintuitive point about how the state should pay women. Well, we say, first of all, a lot of the money that the state has is money that women have earned. We think it's slightly counterintuitive that women will be paying women. And we're not entirely sure where they're going with that line, since he said men should pay women, and then didn't tell us how men were paying women, just the state. And then finally, he spent about 40 seconds on how his policy will actually work which wasn't really long enough for me to get a coherent idea, so let's just give this a go. Well, he said, firstly, this would close the pay gap, right? We call bullshit. If you have two people, one of whom is a female personal assistant, their comparative difference in income between a male personal assistant will be relatively small. If you're talking about two people who are surgeons at a top hospital, women will still not be paid as much as their male counterparts, and just because we've given them a bit of extra cash does not make that just. No thank you. Right. So how is this the wrong narrative to send to women? We say that first of all, this idea is a state san sanction that sexism is a one-way street. We don't buy that sexism is a one-way street. We think it happens towards both men and women. And we say that the state needs to acknowledge that there's more that can be done in both directions for sexual equality, ladies and gentlemen. Secondly, we say this doesn't make individuals within the state change. Rather, we say it raises resentment. If I'm a poor white trash boy from Mississippi and I see the starlets of Beverly Hills getting an extra $2,000 a month to, I don't know, Jersey Shore or one of those modern shows, I don't watch TV. <laughs> then we say that I would have every right to feel angry when I'm a single father who can't feed my baby. 
Like, we just don't buy that that's actually justice, as it's in no way means tested. And we think that's how you get resentment. And we think that resentment is what leads to sexual harassment, to being treated unequally, and to putting people in position where they hate women, as opposed to simply are ignorant about issues of sexual equality. So why do women need role models and not cash? Well, first of all, we think that having a lot of money is an active disincentivizing factor in not doing a lot of work. Like, I've got to be honest, if you gave me 10 million pounds tomorrow, I really doubt that I'd still continue to do my job at the local library. I just don't buy into this idea. I think what I'd do is I'd get a really nice car and spend my time driving from debate competition to debate competition. <laughs> So he says, so he's saying that this is a band-aid policy that doesn't really help these women because since it disincentivizes them to go, and I'll take you in a minute, since it disincentivizes them to go for that better job, to be that role model because they don't need to work or something, we mean this on a local level. We're talking about local school principals here, right? People that young women can look up to. We feel there's an active harm, sir. Now, what we're saying is that this policy won't change that. And we're saying that what it will do is it'll tell the people who are treating them poorly that they've already changed it, so they don't need to change. There's a big difference there, ladies and gentlemen. So on to my final point. We say that this is just not an effective way for the state to deal with a number of problems. Because we say that if a criminal kills your loved one, the state, therefore, doesn't kill that criminal, right? We don't see that as being equal from one power to the next. What the state does do is they do everything in their power to prevent that individual killing again. It's about preventing future injustice. And as I've shown you throughout my speech, this contributes to future injustice and doesn't allow future injustice to be solved in a meaningful sense. Indeed, quite the opposite. But more importantly, we also say that this confuses who is responsible for the majority of poor treatment of women. Because we say the majority of poor treatment of women is not from the state, it's from individual men, particularly now. We say blame them, we say blame us, we're the ones you should hate women. And don't worry, I know you'll all take it out on me at the bar later on. For those reasons, I urge you to oppose this motion.